Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Guide. And this short video is uh, about an incident which occurred uh, just this week um, about the side cargo door opening in flight. So uh, a couple of days ago now, on the 21st of August this year, a 737-200 uh, made a successful landing at Mitu Airport in Colombia after the side cargo door came open in flight. Now the video, which I'll show you after this slide, showed the side cargo door wide open in flight, but it appeared to almost close after touchdown. So the purpose of this video I'm making today is just to give you a quick reminder of the, the, the system and operational procedures involved. Uy, maricas, si la puerta está abierta. So that's um, that's what it looked like from the outside. Um, perhaps now would be a good time to, to talk about the, the the cargo door locking mechanism. Um, now I should say that these do vary slightly from aircraft to aircraft, depending on who did the mod. Um, there, there are several people that, that do cargo door conversions and they all have a slightly different system. I don't know exactly which system was used on the on the aircraft in, in question in the video um, but here I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through the, 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 the system of, of quite a common one. I think this is the PEMCO system um, and again ca cards on the table I, I haven't flown many aircraft with with the side cargo door. I mean I've, I've flown a few um, again, only on on test flights, um, so I'm 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 not very familiar with them, but I'm I I can certainly give you a run through the uh, the, the basics of the systems. So um, so the 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 system works um, usually using the B system hydraulics. It's uh, the, the, there's a mechanically actuated sequence valve, and it uses the the B system pressure to activate the latch cylinders. Uh, to, to drive latch pins into, into fittings that, that are a, along the bottom of the door sill. When those pins are fully seated, uh, their mechanical spring-loaded locks engage uh, lock mounts on the shaft, securing those latches to prevent inadvertent unlatching. As you can imagine, it, it, it's certainly designed to be a, 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 a pretty fail-safe design, so it does make you wonder how, how these incidents happen. I mean, they're, they're extremely rare, but, but obviously occasionally they do happen. Um, I, my theory is that the door isn't, is in, in the, these cases, isn't locked correctly in the first place or fully. But, um, but I don't know. We, we will have to wait for the, for the final report to, to, you know, to, to find this out. Um, anyway, the positive locking of the door can be verified from from the ground or inside by observing inspection windows on the lower edge of the door and you can see one of those to the right of this photo I took of um, of one of the aircraft I flew. Uh, now when the door is locked a green bar will appear in the, in, in the window. When it's not locked you, you get a red bar so that, that's hopefully quite, quite logical. Um, notice there's an, an extra inspection light there on the on the door. Uh, which is new to uh, cargo aircraft. That's just so that you can see the the well the, the vent doors handle and the inspection window and the read the decal instructions. Now about the vent doors, they are located there. Those two large rectangular cutouts, and um, and they're there to to prevent pressurization in the event that the that the cargo door isn't fully closed latched or, uh, or or locked they're manually operated using the handle that you saw in the previous photo um, and must be open before the door can be unlocked and, and closed after the door is is fully closed and locked 
in the flight deck, you will have a panel similar to this. And I say that, that this is the one in the aircraft uh, I flew, but I, I I know that there are several variations on a theme, but they're, they're, they're all similar. Um, and what you've got is you've got two red lights there for, for two independent systems that, that are checking the, the locking of the, of the cargo door and a push to test there. The, if, if either system light illuminates, then it's, it's telling you that the door is, is not safe, um, as detected by that particular system. If the, if neither light is lit, then you can use the push to, push to test, uh, to, to test the circuit and the, the enunciator should, should light. Um, now, I guess for the particular event that we just saw the video of, the, the, the noise, lack of pressurization and airframe vibration will have made it quite obvious to the crew that the side cargo door was open. Um, so you, you may ask, well, why on earth have an enunciator for this? And um, I would imagine the, 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 the reason is that, that these can be a, a precursor to the event. So if the door becomes unlocked but not fully open, then you as the crew can, can see this and, and start taking the necessary action. And what might that action be? Well, the, the QRH procedure I've, I've reproduced there on the, on the right. And essentially what it is, is that um, first thing you do is you check if one or, or both of your lights are illuminated. Now, if only one's illuminated, then what you do is, is, is a system test to, to check for a false warning. If the other light is tested normally, then it it's either assuming it's it's spurious on the one that it that is that that, that is giving you the, a warning, or that the one that isn't giving a warning is locked. Therefore, you can you can land or you can proceed normally. You can, you can conduct the rest of the flight normally because the, the the other locking or the other system is saying that the lock is secure. Now, if both lights illuminate, then the procedure assumes that the door is not safe and all of the subsequent steps for 4 to 13 onwards are all about depressurizing the aircraft and landing um, which you know is is is, is perhaps obvious but it, it takes you through those steps there and again de depressurization to, is assuming that this is happening um, say in the cruise or or, or you know in, in 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 the climb at a point when the aircraft is depressurized in the video we just saw, it happened very soon after takeoff, so the aircraft probably was not pressurized. But um, it, you know, it's, it's only a couple of days after that event. We we, we don't know all the details yet, but uh, from what I understand, it happened very soon after takeoff. And certainly in in other recent events, um, notably those which have happened to seven five sevens, they've all happened around about the the, the, the sort of five six thousand foot mark in the climb. So it's just as the aircraft is starting to pressurize, which might have been the sort of straw that broke the camel's back to uh, for, for a, a system which was or a door which was not fully locked or not fully latched for that bit of pressure to to force the door open. So um, so de depressurizing and, and landing ASAP appears to be the uh, the advice. The actually is no flight crew training manual or FCOM advice for this scenario. Um, but as I've already said, um, the, the <laughs> piecing together the actions and, and, and what could happen, the, the, as, as far as I can see, the, 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 the best things to do are to slow down to, to avoid further damage. That's particularly if the door is, is, is wide open. Uh, but I'd say also if it's just latched as well, because the 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 lift generated over the the door could pull it open. So slowing down will will reduce any any of any lift there or any secondary damage if it does fly open. Best to have it fly open at slow speed than at high speed. Depressurizing is also appears to be uh, good advice. That certainly that's what the QRH was was advising to do, um, and that's to avoid the any pressure in the in building up in the cabin to burst the door open. 
uh, and the final bit of advice is to, is to land as soon as possible which I, I think we would probably all all do on the day so um, the question is really for the investigators um, is is why did the door open um, now as I've written there beyond the obvious statement that the the lock was not done before departure or it failed in flight once unlocked why did the door open now uh, as I've already mentioned it, it it's probably open due to the airflow over it causing it to lift the the other factor of course can be pressure pressurization from the inside forcing it open but those two factors combined will both act to make the door not not only partially open but fully open interestingly on on this video um and it, and it did surprise me when i saw it but once i stopped to think about it it, it made sense after landing and within within a second or so of landing the door closed itself so so why did that happen well a number of reasons first of all is that the airflow is reducing significantly with 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 the with the reduction in air speed on 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 landing um and i think that combined with the the vertical deceleration of of touchdown i mean the, the landing didn't look particularly firm but nevertheless there there's always some vertical deceleration that acting on the way to the door will have, have helped um, push it down. Uh, so it actually went back down toward the closed position after after touchdown. Great pity it doesn't do that in flight, but uh, but there we go. Let's just take a moment to have a look at some similar events which have happened through history. Now I'm not aware of this happening to another 737, but I I, I could be wrong. Um, but but ones which stick in my memory are uh, first of all and the one I haven't got a photo for is the is the Turkish DC-10 which was lost just outside of Paris in 1974, and I think the the thing which which links the the Turkish DC-10 and and the the top photo there the the uh, United uh, Boeing 747 is a where a significant amount of damage was done is that they were both lower cargo doors that they, they, they were the hold doors that opened and those aircraft were 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 in flight you know at a fair amount of airspeed and what appears to happen in, in both of those two cases is the door has been forced up rapidly um, because they were at relatively high speed and, and quite a bit of pressure and it's it's continued to rip the door up into the fuselage area. Um, now the 747, as you can see, got down, but unfortunately the Turkish DC-10 didn't, with the loss of all lives on board. Now the the freighters, as you can see in the bottom three photos, because the side cargo door is is above, um, they, and for whatever reason, you know, maybe in the design, and and this is these photos are of three different aircraft types and you can make it four with the 737 incident um, in each of them the cargo door has survived the experience and there's been no secondary damage done um, which I think is good to know um, so you know for, for those of you flying the cargo uh, 737s um, it looks like the odds are fairly good of, um, of, of the the door and the fuselage staying intact. So uh, just to summarize these events, they, they are very, very rare, but they're not unknown. Uh, so similar events have, have happened to the, uh, well, the 757 DC-8, DC-10, Conver, 997 So they, they happen to, you know, most aircraft eventually. Um, but it's testimony to the 737 and all of those aircraft that they appear to to fly so well with it with the door wide open um, and and this should give you confidence that such a situation is manageable if it should happen to you okay thanks once again for your attention and as always if you've enjoyed the video please give it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and share the video amongst your colleagues thank you